Making a little rain can't keep us indoors tonight. Thank you so much for coming, Macon. Y'all give it up again for your next public service commissioner, Daniel Blackman. Thank you, Daniel. Macon, it's great to be here. We got just three days to go, Macon. It all comes down to Tuesday, the biggest election in the history of the state of Georgia. And think for a moment, Macon, about how far we've come. Think about how far we've come in the American South. Think about how far we've come in the great state of Georgia, now the most competitive battleground state in the United States. You did that. The people of Macon Bibb County did that, hosting two United States Senate runoffs to determine control of the United States Senate. Think about how far we've come, Macon, that your standard bearers in these races are the young Jewish journalist son of an immigrant and a black pastor who holds Dr. King's pulpit at Ebenezer Baptist Church. Think about how far we've come. And we're running against We're running against like the Bonnie and Clyde of corruption in American politics. Two United States senators who when they learned about the threat posed to the people they represent and to our country by COVID-19, their first call was to their stockbroker. We deserve better making and retirement is coming for Kelly Leffler and David Perdue. And the truth is making we have bigger and better things to talk about than Kelly Leffler and David Perdue. Like where we go from here as a people. If you're wondering what it is you've been feeling in your heart this last month that maybe you haven't felt in four years, that's called hope. See, Donald Trump is leaving. Donald Trump is leaving. He may not know it yet, but he's on the way out. And Georgia voters sent Donald Trump packing. You did that, Macon. So the question now is what comes next? We've had four years of bigotry and hatred and scandal and racism and gross incompetence that has killed countless Americans and left millions in financial distress. Now it's on us to repair that damage, and to define the next era in American history. In Georgia, we have never had as much power as we have right now. Georgia voters have never had as much power as we have right now. The whole country is watching us to see what kind of a message we will send about what Georgia stands for. And on Tuesday, we will send a message making that echoes from coast to coast about what Georgia voters stand for, about the values that define our state. We will stand up for love and decency and unity and compassion. We will stand up for health and jobs and justice for the people. This is our time making. This is Georgia's time to shine. But making we have to work. We have to work these next three days like we've never worked before. We can take nothing for granted. So I'm asking you to recommit to the work that we must do to secure victory on Tuesday. I'm asking you to knock on doors. I'm asking you to call your neighbors. I'm asking you to reach out to your families and your church groups and your workplaces and everybody in your community and urge them to get out to the polls on Tuesday. And I bring greetings from my friend, Reverend Warnock, a great moral leader for our state and for our country. And together, Macon, we are building a movement for health, jobs, and justice for the people, health, jobs, and justice for all the people. Let's talk about health for a moment, Macon. More than 300,000 Americans killed by this virus. Our hospital systems buckling under the weight of the outbreak. 
So many who have had to bury loved ones. So many who have spent their last moments alone. Without family to comfort them. A government that has systematically lied to us every step of the way and failed catastrophically to show the leadership, the evidence-based and science-based policymaking we need in a public health crisis like this. We can get out of this crisis making. We can empower the experts to lead us. We can resource the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention based right here in Georgia to take the lead. We can make testing and vaccines free for every American. We can rush resources to hospitals and nursing homes to save lives and slow the spread of this virus. But we have to vote making we have to vote lives are on the line and Macon do you believe like I do that health care is a human right and not just a privilege for those who can afford it or who live in the right zip code health care is a human right and we will establish health care as a human right in the United States of America I was just down in Cuthbert Georgia a week ago Randolph County South Georgia Y'all, they lost their hospital in October. They lost their hospital. It just shut down. In the United States of America, in the middle of a pandemic, the hospital closed. It's one of nine hospitals that have closed in Georgia in the last 10 years. Our state's leaders have refused to expand Medicaid. Our state's leaders have shown such negligence, such a lack of regard for the health of working families in this state. I have something to share with you. My wife, Alicia, is a doctor. Y'all probably know that. She's an OBGYN working mostly in labor and delivery at Grady Hospital in Atlanta. And she sees every day the consequences of our state's neglect of the health of our people. We have one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the United States here in Georgia. Half our counties have no OBGYN doctor at all. And nine hospitals have closed in 10 years. My wife Alicia is actually with us tonight in Macon. Please give her a Macon welcome. And doctors and nurses like Alicia, they've been doing their jobs this year while the foolish politicians have failed us. Doctors and nurses are doing their jobs to keep Georgians healthy. But they need the support of political leadership. They need the support of government at the local, state, and federal level. And if you send me and Reverend Warnock to the Senate, we will reopen those nine hospitals that have closed. We will build new health clinics that serve every community across this state. We will ensure that no Georgian loses the ability to get prescription drugs because drug companies are allowed to rip us off at the pharmacy every day. We will secure health care as a human right for all the people, because all the people need health and jobs and justice. Let's talk about jobs for a moment. So many families right now on the brink of foreclosure, of eviction, bills piling up, credit cards maxed out, can't afford the house payment, can't afford the car payment, Debt collectors calling. Millions have lost their jobs. Small businesses here in Macon operating at 15, 20% capacity for the last nine months through no fault of their own, but because of this deadly pandemic that continues to ravage our state. And after eight months of obstruction, what do David and Kelly offer? $600. Making $600 is a joke. And if you send me and Reverend Warnock to the Senate, we will deliver the direct COVID relief, the $2,000 checks that people need right now so that families can stay in their homes and on their feet. See, Macon, we have to rebuild this economy now. And here's the bottom line. Here's why these races are so important. 
if Mitch McConnell and the Republicans control the Senate, they're going to try to do to Joe and Kamala exactly what they tried to do to President Obama. They will block this new administration's every effort just for the sake of exercising power. And we have too much good to do for the people to be paralyzed by partisan gridlock. Making we need to raise the minimum wage to $15. Because an honest week's work shouldn't allow us just to barely survive, it should allow us to thrive. We need to expand the Pell Grant program so that every young Georgian can get a degree from a public college or an HBCU without taking on a penny of debt. We need to pass the most ambitious infrastructure and jobs and relief program in U.S. history, upgrade our public school facilities, upgrade transit and transportation to connect Macon with the rest of the state and our state with the rest of the American South, make Georgia the number one producer of clean energy in the American South, and America the number one producer of clean energy in the world. We can do these things, Macon but only with victory on Tuesday. Health, jobs, and justice for all the people. Let's talk about justice. Something that you may not know about me, my mother came to this country as an immigrant when she was 23 years old, alone as a young woman. It takes a lot of courage to uproot your life, move to the other side of the planet alone at that age. And like millions of immigrants who have come to these shores, she came here because she believed in the ideas that this country stands for. Let me be real clear with you that that doesn't mean that she indulged some kind of fantasy about American history. You feel me, Commissioner? That doesn't mean that she didn't realize how much further this country had to go. That's why she became a young activist. My mother was marching in the streets for the Equal Rights Amendment when she was in her late 20s. She had me walking around the house wearing one of those ERA now pins when I was four years old. And my mother became a citizen because she recognized that the ballot box is where we demand progress. She believed that this country was on a journey of progress, a journey toward fully realizing our founding ideals, equality in God's eyes, equal justice for all. And she became a citizen so that she could vote for progress because making only by voting will we secure progress. Only by voting will we continue to propel this country forward to higher and higher heights. Only by voting can we build the beloved community that Congressman Lewis taught us about. Only by voting can we secure equal justice for all. The 14th Amendment of our Constitution already guarantees equal protection under the law. But when Ahmaud Arbery is shot to death in broad daylight, in the street, on camera, and the local authorities look the other way because he's a young black man, that makes a mockery of equal justice for all. And so, Macon, we need to get out and vote to fight for a new Civil Rights Act that will secure equal justice for all, regardless of race and regardless of class, and to pass a new Voting Rights Act that will secure the sacred franchise and make voter suppression a federal crime. We have so much good to do, Macon. I want you to feel in your hearts the optimism that comes with the knowledge that we have the power to make history in just three days. We can set the tone for the next decade. Georgia voters can set the tone for the next decade of American history. We can turn the page on these last four years. 
We can elevate our eyes to the horizon and dream again about what's possible. Instead of being assaulted by the latest outrage, the daily scandal, we can envision a republic as great as we can dream. We don't have to accept that poverty or racism or violence are inevitable or necessary. We can dream about higher and higher heights, Macon. Are you ready to dream, Macon? Are you ready to work? Victory is there for the taking, Macon. We're on the cusp of making history. You can send me and Reverend Warnock to the U.S. Senate and send a message that will echo not just from coast to coast, but down the generations. Making you have the power to do that. Are you ready to work? Are you ready to knock on doors and call your neighbors? Are you ready to get out the vote? Say it with me, Making. Say vote. Say vote. I love you. Let's do this. Thank you so much. Thank you.